chapter 22 exercise. The human body may be compared to nicely adjusted machinery which needs care to keep it in running order. One part should not be subjected to constant wear and pressure while another part is rusting from inaction. While the mind is taxed, the muscles also should have their proportion of exercise. Every young person should learn how many hours may be spent in study and how much time should be given to physical exercise. There is quite a difference between weariness and exhaustion. The compression of the waist will not allow free action of the muscles. Another precious blessing is proper exercise. They should go out and exercise every day, making it their object to do some good, working to the end of benefiting others. Variety of exercise. The exercise of one muscle while others are left with nothing to do will not strengthen the inactive ones any more than the continual exercise of one of the organs of the mind will develop and strengthen the organs not brought into use. Each faculty of the mind and each muscle has its distinctive office and all require to be exercised in order to become properly developed and retain healthful vigor. Each organ and muscle has its work to do in the living organism. Every wheel in the machinery must be a living, active, working, working wheel. Nature's fine and wonderful works need to be kept in active motion in order to accomplish the object for which they were designed. Each faculty has a bearing upon the others, and all need to be exercised in order to be properly developed. If one muscle of the body is exercised more than another, the one used will become much the larger and will destroy the harmony and beauty of the development of the system. A variety of exercise will call into use all the muscles of the body. It is not good policy to give up the use of certain muscles because pain is felt when they are exercised. The pain is frequently caused by the effort of nature to give life and vigor to those parts that have become partially useless through inaction. The motion of these long disused muscles will cause pain because nature is awakening them to life. Exercise to be of decided advantage to you should be systematized and brought to bear upon the debilitated organs that they may become strengthened by its use. When useful labor is combined with study, there is no need of gymnastic exercises and much more benefit is derived from work performed in the open air than from indoor exercise. The farmer and the mechanic each have physical exercise, yet the farmer is much the healthier of the two for nothing short of the invigorating air and sunshine will fully meet the wants of the system. The former finds in his labor all the movements that were ever practiced in the gymnasium, and his movement room is the open fields, and the canopy of heaven is its roof, the solid earth its floor. Brethren, when you take time to cultivate your gardens, thus gaining the exercise needed to keep the system in good working order, you are just as much doing the work of God as in holding meetings. If work is performed without the hearts being in it, it is simply drudgery, and the benefit which should result from the exercise is not gain. The movement cure is a great advantage to a class of patients who are too feeble to exercise, but for all who are sick to rely upon it, making it their dependence while they neglect to exercise their muscles themselves, is a great mistake. Many who depend on the movement cure could accomplish more for themselves by muscular exercise than the movements can do for them. There is no exercise that can take the place of walking. By it, the circulation of the blood is greatly improved. Walking in all cases where it is possible is the best remedy for diseased bodies because in this exercise all the organs of the body are brought into use. When the weather will permit, all who can possibly do so ought to walk in the open air every day, summer and winter. A walk, even in winter, would be more beneficial to the health than all the medicine the doctors may prescribe. For those who can walk, walking is preferable to riding. The muscles and veins are enabled better to perform their work. There will be increased vitality, which is so necessary to health. The lungs will have needful action, for it is impossible to go out in the bracing air of a winter's morning without inflating the lungs. There is no exercise that will prove as beneficial to every part of the body as walking. Active walking in the open air will do more for women to preserve them in health if they are well than any other means. 
Walking is also one of the most efficient remedies for the recovery of health of the invalid. The hands and arms are exercised as well as the limbs. Exercise will aid the work of digestion. To walk out after a meal, hold the head erect, put back the shoulders, and exercise moderately will be a great benefit. The mind will be diverted from self to the beauties of nature. The less the attention is called to the stomach after a meal, the better. Morning exercise and walking in the free and invigorating air of heaven or cultivating flowers, small fruits, and vegetables is necessary to a healthful circulation of the blood. It is the surest safeguard against colds, coughs, congestions of the brain and lungs, inflammation of the liver, the kidneys, and the lungs, and a hundred other diseases. A large class of women are content to hover over the stove, breathing impure air for one-half or three-fourths of the time until the brain is heated and half benumbed. They should go out and exercise every day, even though some things indoors have to be neglected. They need the cool air to quiet distracted brains. Neither study nor violent exercise should be engaged in immediately after a full meal. This would be a violation of the laws of the system. Immediately after eating, there is a strong draft upon the nervous energy. The brain force is called into active exercise to assist the stomach. Therefore, when mind or body is taxed heavily after eating, the process of digestion is hindered. The vitality of the system, which is needed to carry on the work in one direction, is called away and set to work in another. God designed that the living machinery should be in daily activity, for in this activity or motion is its preserving power. By active exercise in the open air every day, the liver, kidneys, and lungs also will be strengthened to perform their work. If invalids who can, can would engage in light, useful labor in the open air a portion of each day, they would find physical exercise one of God's appointed agents for the benefit of man. If they worked intelligently, giving both mind and body a due share of exercise, ministers would not so readily succumb to disease. Healthy active exercise is what you need. This will invigorate the mind. There will be increased vitality, which is so necessary to health. Not only will the organs of the body be strengthened by exercise, but the mind also will acquire strength and knowledge through the action of these organs. The more we exercise, the better will be the circulation of the blood. If physical exercise were combined with mental exertion, the blood would be quickened in its circulation, the action of the heart would be more perfect, impure matter would be thrown off, and new life and vigor would be experienced in every part of the body. The proper use of their physical strength as well as of the mental powers will equalize the circulation of the blood and keep every organ of the living machinery in running order. Judicious exercise will induce the blood to the surface and thus relieve the internal organs. Brisk, yet not violent exercise in the open air with cheerfulness of spirits will promote the circulation, giving a healthful glow to the skin and sending the blood vitalized by the pure air to the extremities. By judicious exercise they may expand the chest and strengthen the muscles. By giving heed to proper instruction, by following health principles in regard to the expansion of the lungs and culture of the voice, our young men and women may become speakers that can be heard and the exercise necessary to this accomplishment will pro prolong life. A farmer who is temperate in all his habits usually enjoys good health. His work is pleasant, and his vigorous exercise causes full, deep, and strong inspirations and exhalations, which expand the lungs and purify the blood, sending the warm current of life bounding through arteries and veins. The student sits day after day in a close room, bending over his desk or table, his chest contracted, his lungs crowded. His brain is taxed to the utmost while his body is inactive. He cannot take full, deep inspirations. His blood moves sluggishly, his feet are cold, his head hot. Let them take regular exercise that will cause them to breathe deep and full, and they will soon feel that they have a new hold on life. The diseased stomach will find relief by exercise. 
Exercise is important to digestion and to a healthy condition of body and mind. Digestion will be promoted by physical exercise. Useful employment would bring into exercise the enfeebled muscles, enliven the stagnant blood in the system, and arouse the torpid liver to perform its work. The circulation of the blood would be equalized and the entire system invigorated to overcome bad conditions. I frequently turn from the bedside of these self-made invalids, saying to myself, dying by inches, dying of indolence, a disease which no one but themselves can cure. Neglecting to exercise the entire body or a portion of it will bring on morbid conditions. The bloom of health fades from their cheeks and disease fastens upon them because they are robbed of physical exercise and their habits are perverted generally. Continued inactivity is one of the greatest causes of debility of body and feebleness of mind. Inaction of any of the organs of the body will be followed by decrease in size and strength of the muscles and will cause the blood to flow sluggishly through the blood vessels. In what contrast to the habits of the active farmer or those of the student who neglects physical exercise, his blood moves sluggishly, his feet are cold, his head hot, how can such a person have health? The studied habit of shutting the air and avoiding the exercise closes the pores, the little mouths through which the body breathes, making it impossible to throw off impurities through that channel. The burden of labor is thrown upon the liver, lungs, kidneys, and so forth, and these internal organs are compelled to do the work of the skin. The blood is not enabled to expel the impurities as it would if active circulation were induced by exercise. In some cases, want of exercise causes the muscles of the bowels to become enfeebled and shrunken, and these organs that have become enfeebled for want of use will be strengthened by exercise. Moderate exercise every day will impart strength to the muscles, which without exercise become flabby and enfeebled. If invalids would recover health, they should not discontinue physical exercise, for they will thus increase muscular weakness and general debility. Bind up the arm and permit it to remain useless even for a few weeks, then free it from its bondage, and you will discover that it is weaker than the one you have been using moderately during the same time. Inactivity produces the same effect upon the whole muscular system. <laughs>